right, good morning everyone. Welcome to this very early and not very pleasant day. Uh, welcome to GovCamp. Uh, we're very pleased you could come. Um, we, um, we'll just kick things off. Uh, we're running just a little bit late and our apologies for that, but just a, a couple of things. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and the continuing contributions they make to our community. Uh, second of all, I just want to frame the day a little bit. Uh, GovCamp is all about sharing and learning and raising the bar for innovation and Gov 2.0 adoption in the Australian Public Service and indeed um, for the Australian Public Service to become better at engaging, sharing and participating with the broader community. Um, I'll just run through the schedule for the day very briefly. So we have two panels happening in here. We actually have copies of the schedule at the front desk and um, pasted all around the, the uh, venue. This room, room over here is our showcase room where you can go in and talk with a few different people about projects that have been happening. We will actually have a video running uh, talking about GovHack, which was the event that just happened in the last few days and the reason why most of our organisers, our volunteer organisers, are looking rather frazzled from the lack of sleep. Um, but um, GovHack, we had over 40 projects uh, developed in 48 hours from developers in, in Sydney and Canberra and um, some fantastic stuff that looks like it's going to be adopted by some of the government departments and agencies that were here, so that's very exciting. Um, in, over in the side here we have studio room one and two where the workshops will be happening in the afternoon. Uh, in here all the main panels will be happening in here and bar uh, camp sessions in the afternoon. Uh, what you'll see up on the yellow board up there to the left of the coffee where no doubt you've definitely read where the uh, coffee instructions were. We have coffee and tea here and we have catering throughout the rest of the day. Uh, unfortunately we couldn't get real coffee here and our apologies for that but there are instructions of how to do the one to two minute walk to get it if you're hardcore needing, of needing caffeine. But uh, to the left of the coffee instructions is a bit of whiteboard which has uh, six numbers under option three and option four. Option three will run in this room, option four will run in the showcase room. And please put your hand up to do a 20 minute talk about something interesting, what you're doing in your agency, something you'd like to share, uh, something that is relevant to innovation, something that's relevant to Gov 2.0. Uh, this is your opportunity to share with your peers and colleagues uh, the stuff that you're doing because we wanted to not just tell you what you know, we think and present you with some pretty awesome speakers, we want to make this is a very um, flat hierarchy for today. You know, we can, we can all pretend that we're all exactly equal today and then we can go back to normal life, I guess, tomorrow. <laughs> um, so welcome. So a couple of things. Um, uh, so the showcase is over there. The showcase rooms are all whiteboard, all of it, all four walls, apart from the windows. Please don't draw on the windows. But in the middle is a black uh, little table with whiteboard markers and wipers. And what we'd love you to do is throughout the day, you're going to come up with interesting ideas of stuff that we could do. Um, this week is Innovation Week. What we'd love to do is get your ideas up on the wall and we're going to write them all up in a big report of stuff that we should do before Innovation Week next year. We'll see how we go. It may be a multi-year running plan, but let's see if we can get some cool ideas up, write them up, and then they become part of your contributions to um, GovCamp and to a bit of a, a running plan for innovation and Gov 2.0 in Australia. So please use the whiteboard markers, go a bit nuts, and be completely innovative. It's an overused word. Okay, fair enough. So uh, a couple of other things. We've got um, some sponsors that have information in there. You've got the ACT government actually have um, a little stand in there and are talking about their data ACT initiative as well as some of their other open government initiatives. So definitely worth having a chat to them and giving them feedback on that. Uh, we have the academic forum is running as part of today. Uh, so the academic forum is made of two parts. There's a panel, which is after our case studies panel, and then there's the workshop happening in the afternoon. A couple, just one last final thing. We have, um, so there are some media covering today. Today is being live streamed across, well, the world. Uh, we know that there are people in Sydney watching. Hi, Sydney. Hi, the rest of Australia. Uh, who are um, tuned into what we're doing today, and they're going to be posting questions. Now, the questions they're going to post are go to, going to go to the hashtag #HashGovStream, and everyone here and anyone else, if we could please use the hashtag #HashGovCamp. And uh, what we'll be doing is again collating all that and doing some analysis of it and trying to use that to come up with a report out of the day. Please, everyone that's coming in late, make sure you come and take a seat. Up the front. Up the front. Um, and then the questions that are put to the stream, to the Gov stream hashtag, will actually be put to um, speakers during the break so that people who are watching remotely can actually be continued to be engaged during the morning, uh, lunch, and afternoon tea breaks. 
Um, there are some media who are covering the event. Um, we are doing video recording of the event, so if you don't want your image captured, and we have sent this information in the information you were sent as attendees, then you need to let us know, otherwise it's all fair game. Um, and um, finally, there's a, a group here, Gov 2.0 Radio, who are running around doing little interviews with people. Again, if you don't want to be, have your, your image or voice captured, just let them know when they come and chat to you, but they're going to be running around doing um, media coverage and um, social media coverage of the day as well. Very exciting um, lineup. Uh, I'd like to, I'm very chuffed to introduce our first speaker, our, um, our keynote presenter, uh, Professor John McMillan, who is the Australian Information Commissioner, uh, to speak to us about his thoughts on innovation and Gov 2.0. Thank you. Thanks, Pia. Good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to have the honour of introducing GovCamp and welcoming you to today's discussions. This event captures a significant change that's sweeping through Australian government and transforming the style and processes of government and how it engages with the Australian and international community. Um, the trigger for, the, for this transformation is new technology that enables, excuse me, I'll get myself organised here, uh, that enables an ever-expanding community to, to participate easily and at low cost in generating ideas and formulating answers. The inspiration for discovery and change can come from any direction and a wider pool of expertise and enthu enthusiasm can be tapped. Three stories in the last fortnight illustrate the unbridled opportunity that technology offers for new research but also the formidable practical obstacles that it can, can impede that change. The first was the story of an eminent Cambridge mathematician, Tim Gowers, who used a blog to invite others to contribute to solving a difficult mathematical problem. The first response came seven hours later from Canada, followed by 26 other people posting 800 comments over the next five weeks. They solved the mathematical problem that was posed and also a more difficult one thrown up in the discussion. The second article argued that organisations and researchers who benefit most from open data and open science do not necessarily follow that practice. One company targeted for criticism was Google um, for publishing scholarly research findings on internet usage but not allowing access to the proprietary data on which the findings were based. The third report addressed a reason most commonly given by corporations and governments for not sharing their data, namely a concern to protect the privacy of data subjects. The United in uh, Kingdom Information Commissioner uh, in this article recently published a draft code on, of practice on anonymising data to strike the right balance between protecting individual privacy but also advancing the government's open data agenda. The Information Commissioner noted that the risks of anonymisation can sometimes be estimated but in other cases overstated. These stories are not unique but they helpfully frame discussion about the potential through technology for greater information sharing, collaboration and participation across society and government in tackling problems and stimulating innovation and discovery. GovCamp itself is a wonderful example of this inspiration for change. And may I assist today's deliberations by pointing to some promising open government developments in Australia and overseas that support this trend. Turning first to Australia, I'll mention five areas of important reform. First, there are new headline messages from government that signal a fundamental change in thinking. One example is the Declaration of Open Government issued by the Minister for Finance in July 2010. The declaration committed the government to open access, to open government rather, based on a culture of engagement built on better access to and use of government held information and sustained by the innovative use of technology. The declaration supported online engagement, online collaboration and employee initiative, uh, initiated projects based on the three key principles of informing, engaging and participating. 
Another change in the headline messages occurred in the reformed Freedom of Information Act in 2010. It contains a radical new objects clause declaring that government, is, government information is a national resource to be managed for public purposes. And backing up that declaration, the Act made it easier for members of the public to exercise their legal right to obtain access to government documents and also placed new obligations on government agencies to publish more information on the web through a new information publication scheme and a disclosure log of information released under the FOI Act. Another proposed uh, headline change is in the, will be to the Public Service Act to reduce the list of APS values from 15 to 5, one of which will be that the APS is open and accountable to the Australian community. A second area of reform is that new platforms have been established to facilitate open data and open engagement. A leading example is the data.gov website, established in March 2011 by AGIMO, which now hosts over 1,100 data sets from 113 contributing agencies in areas like financial and taxation statistics, regional services, um, health services, uh, criminal justice uh, uh, data, uh, and uh, location of government offices. My own office is joining that trend and is currently uploading 30 years of FOI statistics on requests and costs. Other examples of the new platforms include GovSpace, an online uh, platform hosting over 50 blogs and websites, and GovDex, an online platform for sharing information across government. A third area of reform is the publication of new policies to guide information management and publication practices across government. Guidelines published by AGIMO as part of the measures to implement the recommendations of the Gov 2.0 report deal with web publication of public sector information, online engagement, web accessibility and licensing of public sector information. The Australian Archives recently released a digital continuity plan to move Australian government agencies to the default position of, informa of digital information management and continuity. The central objective of that plan is that government information should be accessible and usable. As the plan states, information is usable when it meets five criteria. You can find it when you need it, open it when you need it, work with it in the way you need to, understand what it is and what it is about, and trust that it is what it says it is. Another policy guideline published by my own office last year was a statement of eight principles on public sector information. The principles build on the FOI declaration that government information is a national resource. Uh, moving through the information life cycle, the principles espouse that open access to public sector information must be the default position, that the community should be consulted about information that has use or interest to them. Agencies should ensure that effective information governance arrangements are in place. Published information should be easily discoverable and usable by the community. So far as possible, information should be published under open licensing arrangements. And there should be a transparent inquiry and complaints framework to capture public feedback about agency publication and access decisions. Elsewhere in government, other important poly policy initiatives which reflect the shared premise that information sharing leads to better government include the Australian Government Innovation Action Plan, the COAG National Information uh, Sharing Strategy and the Australian Public Service Circular on online participation and public comment. <clears throat> A fourth area of reform is the dilution of legal obstacles to information sharing and reuse. Information is a valuable proprietary and intellectual asset, and not surprisingly, the law protects the owner of that asset. However, when government is the owner, the steadfast assertion of that ownership right runs counter to the principle that government information is a public asset whose economic and social use 
is enhanced when it is made available for public reuse. A number of promising steps have been taken to reset that balance in the laws relating to copyright and intellectual property. These include the publication by the Attorney General's Department of an amended statement of intellectual property principles that prescribe the Creative Commons attribution license as the default setting for government publication, the Australian Government Open uh, Access and Licensing Framework, or OSGOL, which supports open access to publicly funded information by promoting an Australian ad adaption of the Creative Commons licences and the publication of a revised intellectual property manual. <coughs> Copyright laws are not the only legal obstacle to information sharing, and similar work is either, and similar reform work is required in other areas. There's a need to reform statutory secrecy provisions in line with the recommendations of the Australian Law Reform Commission. Privacy laws can inhibit information exchange, which partly explains why my office was established to bring freedom of information and privacy protection together in a single scheme. <coughs> and the security classification system can also be an impediment, an issue that's being addressed through, uh, partly through the work of my office in its review of FOI decision making. Finally, in Australia, there are many specific reform initiatives underway um, that are transforming the way that information is managed and shared by government. Uh, some of these are being taken up in other panel sessions uh, in Gov GovCam, but briefly they include init specific initiatives such as the creation of an Office of Spatial Policy to manage a new policy on spatial data access, a proposed national plan for environmental information led by the Bureau of Meteorology, the service delivery reform project that makes it easier for people to exchange information with government at a central point, the MySchool website, which has received over five million hits, and the replication of that initiative in new websites, such as My University and My Superannuation. Well, let me touch uh, briefly now on some developments in other countries. And the point of this comparison is twofold. Firstly, to make the point that open government and open data movements are an international trend. And secondly, to remind ourselves that Australia has a lot to learn from other countries which are decidedly ahead of us in some respects. One defining international development was the launch uh, last year of, in September um, uh, last year of an international open government partnership jointly by the US and Brazilian presidents. 53 countries have now joined the uh, open government partnership and signified commitment to an international declaration of open government and to adopting national action plans that will be subject to independent external review. At the OGP's first annual meeting in Brazil this year, it was attended by almost uh, uh, 1,200 delegates representing 73 countries. Australia has not yet announced whether it will be joining this international partnership. Another landmark international program is the International Budget uh, Partnership Survey, which examines levels of budget transparency and accountability in 94 countries. Budget transparency is a key to reducing corruption, favouritism, inefficiency and wastage in government and improving the quality and efficiency of government by linking outcomes to expenditure. Well, Australia has a well-developed framework for budget formulation and transparency, uh, but we've not sought to compare ourselves to the international criteria and benchmarks. An opportunity to do so exists in a discussion paper um, launched recently by the Commonwealth Financial Accountability Review in the Department of Finance. And may I add that I was pleased to see um, that an open budget entry was the winner of the Best Open Government Application Award at the GovHack um, seminar this weekend. Uh, that entry provides an interactive picture of uh, government spending and demonstrates uh, how it can be made um, effective in a form that is uh, usable by the community. Moving from the global to the country stage, there are many landmark initiatives in individual countries. 
In the US and the UK, President Obama and Prime Minister Cameron have personally led their open government reforms. President Obama issuing three open government directives on his first day in office, Prime Minister Cameron pledging to make the UK government the most open in the world. The central data portals in both countries offer thousands of uh, data sets from across government. The UK has announced plans to take that a step further by establishing a public data corporation as a centre of excellence for collecting, holding and managing public data and ensuring a consistent approach across government. GovCamp participants may be aware of many of the innovative websites that are based on that data in other countries, such as in the UK, the They Work For You website <coughs> and the What Do They Know website. Now, one other country development that I'll mention is Canada's action plan on open government, launched last year by the Canadian Prime Minister, which defines three activity streams, open information, open data and open dialogue. Now, let me briefly end by mentioning some projects and initiatives underway in my own office in support of the um, open government initiatives. One I've already mentioned was the publication uh, last year of eight principles on open public sector information. Uh, a second was a publication of an issues paper last year on making, on valuing the, uh, the economic and social value of public sector information. Uh, we've recently built on that discussion paper by undertaking a survey of 243 Australian government agencies on their compliance, their, on two aspects, their legal compliance with the uh, requirements of the Information Publication Scheme in the FOI Act, and secondly, um, their uh, storage and management of public sector information. Uh, the survey was conducted on a voluntary basis among agencies. And I'm delighted to say that 79% of Australian government agencies um, and, uh, um, of the, uh, have completed the survey and of the, the big 10 users in our FOI space, uh, nine of the agencies completed the survey. Uh, another initiative was a report published earlier this year <coughs> on um, FOI charges and access But a theme in that report was to reset the Freedom of Information Act so that the legal right is an important fundamental uh, but not the central part of government programs to make information accessible upon request by the um, community. Um, one example of the challenge that, uh, that taken up is that, for example, if you visit any government website and, and look for how you obtain um, information, you're immediately drawn to the web page on freedom of information, which explains the legal process for obtaining uh, government documents. Uh, freedom, that's fundamental, but it should be part of a broader framework which explains all the options available to people for obtaining um, access to information with freedom of information rights as being um, the legal uh, backdrop that is required when other measures have been unsuccessful. But there's uh, many other projects um, across government and, uh, and on which my office is working which are fundamental. One which we launched a couple of years ago in an issues paper um, called Towards a National Information Policy uh, was to pose the question of whether Australia needs a better framework for identifying the strands of national information policy. This has become more important since the, uh, the conclusion of the work of the steering group to implement the Gov 2.0 report. Uh, there are many agencies, there are many, many initiatives uh, that play a role in information management, open data, uh, open access um, in Australia. Uh, but there is no settled framework, there's no national action plan of the kind that exists in other countries. That may become more important too if, for example, the suggestion in the Williams report on AGIMO uh, earlier this year 
um, that, uh, which suggests a possible shift in direction um, away from the Gov 2.0 agenda um, to other more traditional areas uh, of AGMO work is taken up. So that is a challenge that will be taken up and, uh, and is uh, uh, projected to be the subject of another issues paper uh, by my office later this year. But it's a challenge that may also be taken up in the deliberations uh, during GovCamp. So I wish you well in the deliberations over the next, uh, uh, over the, the following day. Sadly, I can't stay. Um, another initiative that my office has is we have a, a, what's a, an information contact officers a network, uh, usually attended by over 150 officers, and today is, the, uh, uh, is, is one of the days on which uh, our um, contact officers network meeting uh, is being held, and so I, I have to go off to, uh, to join the discussions at, at that uh, seminar. But I wish you well for the deliberations in GovCamp, and I particularly uh, look forward to, uh, um, to researching the, the product of the deliberations um, over the, the coming days. Thank you.